Welcome everyone to Community News. So today, a bunch of news has come to me uh, about Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne. So I wanted to make a quick video over it, and uh, I'm really hyped for it. So hopefully my excitement can kind of roll on to you guys and maybe get you guys more excited or something. But in case you want to see my feelings over stuff, uh, this is what I'm making it for. So today we're going to be looking over the Bloodborne DLC trailer and teaser. Uh, I actually think they're calling it the gameplay trailer, not the teaser trailer. So um, kind of moving ahead on that end. And we're going to be focusing on also the Dark Souls 3 uh, release date and news. Uh, but first we're going to be looking at the Bloodborne trailer and analyzing it for different weapons and PvP structures that uh, we might want to see. I'm not focusing on lore as uh, I might make a separate video on that. And uh, this is very unscripted by the way as I'm trying to keep this kind of my... Uh, I always try to keep stuff like this more personal and therefore I don't script it because then I'm just reading a script with no emotion. Anyway, so the Bloodborne DLC is going to include new weapons, armor, lore, NPCs, and bosses. So a bunch of new s everything good. And hopefully, I'm really hoping that they improve the matchmaking as that was my biggest gripe and why I don't play Bloodborne anymore actually because there's no PvP to be found. I'm always invading PvEers that are just healing, disconnecting different stuff like that and you know it's not fun honestly but anyway I'm going to go into specifics on the trailer and uh, gonna look at different weapons and such and so let's get into it all right so right off the bat actually I do want to make one more point over a single image that I'm gonna have up and that's actually uh, in the background you can see some kind of portal or sun looking ish thing that has like some trees or something growing like into it and okay this is gonna be a spoiler for my lore videos and I've never heard anybody else come to this conclusion before and so I'm positive you have never heard of this or well you could have thought of it but uh, I'm gonna give you to the count of five to skip ahead to a time that I'm gonna put on the screen so that you can not spoil this for you and honestly I recommend if you're planning on uh, looking into my lore videos and such uh, probably should skip ahead because this is gonna be a pretty big pretty big thing one two three four five all right just pause it and skip all right so I actually believe that the nightmare the dream and the real world that the hunter visits is all one interconnected world. I think this is kind of one of those things of merging this, like, between them. And I'll explain this more in my lore videos, obviously. But that's what I just think this is, and I really wanted to point that out, so just, just throwing that out there. Anyway, to the weapons, I apologize. Alright, so this first little scene here, we're seeing a bunch of uh, hunters moving, uh, looking like they're in co-op, but I actually think these might be uh, NPCs, as they don't have that the co-ops that I'm believing that are probably in the back, don't have any kind of glow or anything. Uh, maybe there's some kind of rune now that you can get rid of that glow. Remember that you're just getting rid of it in a matchmaking update. It looks like they're updating the graphics a bit more and hopefully getting rid of some frame drops also. So maybe that's what they're going to do with that. And I'll get into graphics a bit more, but it could just be tuned for the trailer. I know a lot of game studios do that. And it looks like they're trying to kind of push this to make more people want to buy it as uh, December the 3rd, whenever it's coming out. Uh, and like uh, you can buy the disc and the expansion with it almost like the game of the year edition of the older games uh, is coming out a couple days after the DLC comes out but uh, we can see a bunch of armors and uh, some weapons in here if you look extremely closely to the middle closest hunter you can see that he's wearing or that he's using a new weapon and you can kind of see it looks kind of hammer like almost and uh, the hunter in front of him 
I can't see very well, but it looks like he's using some kind of saw blade. Could be just like the saw spear, but you know, I can't really tell for sure. And going on to the next slide. All right, so obviously this weapon is pretty significant. You see it a couple times in the trailer. And uh, this is the only real look I'm gonna put on it. Uh, it looks like a hammer whenever you slow it down just before it connects to the saw blade. And so, hopefully, it's a pretty decent weapon. Hopefully, you two-hand it whenever you uh, transform it. Because weapons that are two-handed, whenever you transform them, generally have the best movesets I've found. So, uh, that's always it's always good. So, hopefully, we can get that. And um, there's like a slight second, and I'm not going to be able to do it, I don't think. Uh, I don't think my editing system is that precise, but... There's like a very slight moment where the dialogue cuts off and you can hear the saw blade spinning, you know, vroom, and it's super sweet. And uh, you're welcome for those added sound effects. All right, so this little slide here, this little scene, obviously shows a new weapon that uh, probably going to be like a Tenitrous class weapon, that's what I'm going to call it, as you see him buff it and then go to swing. So, I really don't like that idea. I despise the Tenitrous with a passion. Has like the worst moveset ever. It's just R1 spammy to the max. It's the same thing in both modes. So it's basically like a weapon from Dark Souls except lowered with half the moveset. I just, uh, I just don't like it. Don't like it one bit. This weapon does look cooler and um, what's probably the R1, maybe the running R2 because he is sprinting. I don't know. Looks pretty cool. I mean, as long as this weapon has a good move set, and hopefully, whenever you buff it, maybe it has some kind of like special R two or something. I don't know. It it just needs something that makes it better than the Tenitrous. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it has some like uh, crazy. Maybe you backstep or run and hit R two to buff it or something like that, and it has some kind of other transform mode. That would be cool, but I don't know. I'm not interested in this weapon one bit. And uh, I don't know, though, the fire does make it look really cool. And I'm uh, pretty sure you can kind of see some fire effects whenever he hits the guy. So that's pretty cool. And uh, I don't know. We'll just have to see. You know, take everything from me as a grain of salt. All right, so the next slide here, I'm going to slow it down quite a good bit because uh, it's really hard to see the weapon because they're moving so fast, you know, which is always good. But uh, it looks like a uh, curved sword, almost like the burial blade, but it has like a saw cleaver and saw spear-like uh, transformation where it has a handle and the blade, and the blade can curve over like the saw blade and saw spear uh, to kind of hover over the outside of your hand that would be showing with the handle and transform it into a standard sword. Personally, I like it really, 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 really a lot. And that was some good grammar right there. Really, really a lot. I love the saw spear. It's my favorite weapon. But uh, this this weapon doesn't quite take the cake for the weapon I'm most excited for. And I'll get into that. All right, next slide. There we go. All right, so that was super fast. I'm going to like put it in super slow-mo oh my gosh bows I'm a bow bro okay we all you guys you need to come I'm gonna have like a stream where the only weapon we are gonna be using is that weapon because I know that it is a trick weapon because people are calling it the sigil sword or something with an s and I'm super apologize I don't actually have that in my very badly written notes so super excited for it that that's gonna be my weapon that right there along with the next one okay but before we go to the next slide I want to say hopefully and I really really hope this that arrows um, can either be purchased on the side and you can have them like in your item slots or something I do not want the arrows to take quick silver quick silver bullets I really don't uh, that would be cool like the only reason I would take that is if the arrow shots actually would 
count as like a parry or counter shot, whatever you call it. If that was the case, oh my gosh, dude, like, mm, I, I would marry that weapon. Jeez. All right. Next slide is obviously this obsidian great sword esque weapon. If you don't know what the obsidian great sword is, I'll try to get a image for it and put it up. And it also is like threaded cane almost, where it kind of detaches from different segments of the blade to bend and twist, almost like put some extra momentum into the into the hit. And this and the bow are the weapons I'm excited for, and I just can't wait. The hype is real. And uh, that's about it that I have to say for this weapon. Uh, well, actually, I want to know, and this doesn't really explain it, but what is the uh, other transformation for this weapon? Uh, does it turn into a whip, or does it become stable? completely and maybe like uh it seems like there's some curves along it so maybe like you flip it back and it's like a double-edged sword or something like that and more like uh cleaver looking i don't know whatever they do i'm sure it's gonna be really cool they've been really creative with the weapons we've seen so far and it really looks impressive we haven't seen any new guns from what i can tell i've analyzed this thing pretty closely and they're really just showing us trick weapons right now. I don't think we need any more guns. I mean, I, I don't like guns anyway. I think they ruined PvP and PvE alike. I think they did too much damage. Guns should only do about... I don't think guns should do any damage. But if they have to do damage, they can do like one or two, I guess. I think guns shouldn't have done damage. I think they could have done something like uh, their duds or something like that. They're blunted just wound the person and like knock them back and that would make sense you know from like the visceral attacks like you stun them and then you could do like stab them with the sword or something like dark souls one style that's what i think they should have done but uh you know it it's whatever and oh my word if they bring back repose in this dlc i will literally fly to FromSoft and just mm, yeah all right next slide all right Beast mode hype. Alright, so this is the, either just a reskin for the Beast Claws that is coming out, or maybe a new Beast Claw that's of a higher level, or, you know, outfit or something. I don't think it's an outfit, but looks super cool. It looks like um, the Beast Claws can now, like, interrupt people, and that seems interesting. I don't know. I haven't tried doing the Beast Roar uh, style of things, uh, with those enemies, I might want to try and, uh, see if I can pull it off and do the R2. Still, I think they did an excellent job on filming this, this little scene. Uh, they, they really are creative whenever they're doing this, and, you know, it's always, it's always good. It makes you hype, you know, it's just a really cool slide, but, Similar weapon, so we're going to move on. Alright, so the Warp Sword 2.0. Oh, yay. I don't know. It's not going to have the same moveset as Dark Souls 2, hopefully. Not going to be OP, hopefully. But alongside it, he's actually using some kind of shield that's blocking the magic from Martyr Ligarius. So maybe they're adding some kind of shield to block against like uh, magic, blood magic, and different stuff like that. I really hope they add blood magic. Like, I was like, I heard there was magic abilities that you could unlock in Bloodborne, and I was like, dude, this is so cool. You know, like, you take your own blood and you use, like, blood magic or something because you're a vampire. And we got the arcane that we did. And there's also another magic spell that we saw in the trailer. I'm not going to show it because it's just kind of like standard soul arrow thing. I don't think it's that cool. I'm not a magic guy, sorry, but anyway, this weapon, some people have said that the shield is probably its transformation, you know, you take out the shield, I don't think so, uh, I don't know what the transformation is for this weapon, but it's probably not the shield that, like, comes alongside it, I couldn't see them doing anything like that, but 
I don't know, maybe it is the case, maybe uh, it's supposed to be like a night thing. Uh, I saw this and I instantly thought, hey, you know what would be a cool idea? To make like a night build with the Kanehurst set and different stuff like that, and use the shield and some kind of sword and katana and make a like a royal looking knight. I thought that would be pretty cool, but that was just some thoughts that I had. Alright, we'll move on to the next slide. Alright, so this weapon is a lance looking weapon in its first transformation, and then it turns into like a war pick style. And it's super, super, super cool looking. And obviously, he's fighting the one dark beast on top of the roof in uh, the Forbidden Woods, so this is not a new area, but still it's super cool looking this is another weapon I'm super excited for uh, they did a good job of hiding it. I feel like the cooler weapons they're they're hiding behind stuff you know you see this freaky looking dark beast that probably a lot of people didn't see because it's easy to skip it and a lot of people didn't do the chalice dungeons so people are like whoa do you do enemy and obviously the people with more precise eyes and more precise uh, time and development in Bloodborne will be looking towards the weapon and the ballerness it has. So this weapon, I feel like it looks like it's going to be two-handed whenever it turns into the war pick, so it's probably going to have a pretty sweet move set. Uh, any kind of weapon that is going to be a new style, unlike the Burial Blade Sword and like... Uh, the one warhammer looking thing that has the fire coming out of it that stuff is like okay whatever you know it's just kind of a reskin of the old weapons kind of like in dark souls you know uchi katana black steel you know different stuff like that and it's just like same moveset but different stats and stuff like i don't really like that but stuff like this is what really gets my attention all right and in the final scene, we can see a clock tower and a Jura Kanehurst looking guy sitting down. And you can see Bloodborne, the Old Hunters DLC. Alright, well guys, I think you can interpret what you want from the lore right now. Next week I might have a video on my interpretations of what the lore of it might be. There's a lot of hints and nudges, and that guy at the end has to have something to do with it. They did say that you will be fighting Ludwig, so maybe that's Ludwig, and maybe we're going to fight him, but I really think that the Cleric Beast is Ludwig, and you can see there's a fire, uh, there's a Cleric Beast on fire, but if you look closely in the background, you can see that there's like glass and stuff, so possibly, and this would be like the sickest thing ever, maybe you go up and talk to Ludwig up in that clock tower, and then all of a sudden, boom, you know, like something crazy happens and he starts turning into the cleric beast and like you start fighting him or something. I know they had a idea in Dark Souls 1 for the original uh, Grave Lord Nido boss fight. And it, the original Abyss or uh, Graveyard Catacombs area was going to be the Painted World design. And where you fight uh, Priscilla, there was going to be a collapsing floor and there was going to be a staircase going up that you would fight Nito like as you were going up. And he was supposed to be like a huge giant. And you can kind of see that from the opening cinematic that he was supposed to be like super, super, super tall because he was like as big as the dragon that was like laying down. And maybe that could be a design for this fiery cleric beast. That would be like legit the coolest thing ever. Alright guys, that's going to kind of wrap up uh, the Bloodborne DLC. It releases November 24th, so hype is real. It's like so close. It's only like two months away. And that no, I know it sounds like a long time, but it's going to fly right by, I promise you. Anyway. Let's move on to Dark Souls 3. So, Dark Souls 3 is coming out March 24th. Same again with that 24 number. I feel like that's FromSoft's lucky number. Kind of like how Bungie has the lucky number 7. 
24 I feel like is the lucky number for FromSoft but I don't know it's whatever and so there's actually a rumored beta that there's gonna be one in October I believe and that's what my notes say October like 15th or sometime after that I highly doubt it honestly because they've had so much like alpha and stuff like that in live events and uh, like you know PAX Prime and all those different places and I feel like they're not gonna have a beta but if they do it's gonna be like Dark Souls 2 I feel like or Bloodborne where it's super super closed and it's gonna be super hard to get a code and stuff if they do and I get in I'm gonna show you guys everything I promise and it's it's gonna be cool but uh, I, I don't I really feel like they're not gonna do it and I kind of hope they don't do it cuz like that's before the Bloodborne DLC and so I feel like they should kind of postpone it and maybe if they're gonna come out with a beta put it really close to the Dark Souls 3 release like if it's coming out March 24th uh, let it come out like February 24th 25th you know around there so that we have like a month to look over it analyze it and whenever they had the alpha for Bloodborne that was open people looked all over that crap they broke it they went outside of the map and showed a bunch of stuff that was not supposed to be announced and actually I think that was kind of uh, a media slip that they planned but you know if it wasn't supposed to be there then they really need to wait and push it back I feel like but on this other note and other news we have some confirmation and leaked videos of magic and some uh, quotes from Miyazaki of how he wants magic to fit into Dark Souls 3. So he says, uh, and I'm not quoting exactly, if you want the complete quotes I'll try to get a link in the article below and uh, you can you know, follow that and read it as you will. And GameSpot was, I believe, the one who interviewed him. And he said something along the lines of, uh, he doesn't want magic to be just uh, getting new spells with a new number of castings and just a more defined color and look of the previous spell. He wants you to be able to use them tactically, and he's gonna. he says that he is going to include some type of battle arts and with it, so some people have been speculating that possibly you're gonna have the ability to use battle art in order to buff your magic damage for a certain amount of time or give you possibly like a shield in the back to cover you from backstabs i think something like the gower's ring like effect for like a battle art of a staff or talisman where you hit the battle art you consume the battle art and it puts like a gower's ring like guy hugging your back or something and like backstabs do super minimal damage but at the same time you have to cast right then because you can't like roll or something or you can only roll like so fast and maybe like it speeds up your casting or something as long as castings aren't super fast in the first place that would be really cool and and also in other news they were also talking about how some stuff is going to be returning from Dark Souls 2 and other stuff from Dark Souls 1. So I'm sure a lot of you have heard this, but it's going to be soul level matchmaking. It's always good to look at soul memory and instantly hate it and want to forget it. And then looking at soul level, you want to praise it and then curse it for the amount of twinkers and the undead berg. Anyway, I think it's going to be good to have soul level again, but uh, as long as there's some kind of way to stop twinking, um, possibly if you invade in a certain level, then you can only do so much damage to uh, people of that uh, smaller level. Like, let's say level 10s can only deal, I don't know, I'm throwing a random number out there, 200 damage, and maybe the standard amount of health for you know like level 10 is like 600 or something 
So, like, you can only do so much damage as a, of a person's health to, like, kind of stop twinking. Uh, I don't know. They can come up with something. That's just, like, right off the top of my head. But uh, also they talked about weapon degradation. Uh, Miyazaki said, I personally think that weapons in Dark Souls 2 break a little too easy. And this is directly quotes. This was implemented intending for players to try out many types of weapons, but even so, I felt they broke too quickly. However, in Dark Souls 1, they didn't break enough. You can probably see right there why I do these unscripted. Uh, I just kind of read super fast, and I don't know. I, I like keeping these personal. And so, hopefully, in Dark Souls 3, I really liked how slow weapon degraded in Dark Souls 1. I, I personally don't like... Uh, this kind of stuff implemented in games where uh, you have to repair stuff whenever you die or something like that. I feel like whenever they put stuff like that in the game, it really draws back on the experience and it feels like just a chore to go to like a repair merchant and stuff to go into it. And I really liked how Dark Souls 1 did it, where it's super slow, you don't really have to worry about it too much, it gives you a warning before it's about to break. It's decently cheap for most weapons to restore them up. I liked how they did crystal weapons in that game, but in Dark Souls 2, they did break really, really, really too fast, especially in the first DLC. Uh, fighting Sen, the Slumbering Dragon, uh, you had to carry two weapons in that boss fight, which was in interesting for sure. Uh, it made you have to go and level up a secondary weapon, and you couldn't only use that weapon, you know. But still, I, I really didn't like it. I really think they could have, really could have increased that. Also, summons are going to return. Nobel Maidens summon signs, and he says that, uh, so, you instead of having to farm just cracked red eye orbs, there's going to be, uh, Oh, not uh, specifically this item, but something like the Red Eye Orb in Dark Souls 1, where it's just an infinite number of invasions and the like. And he also says that uh, illusory walls will return, but instead of uh, in Dark Souls 2 how you hit X-Ray to open up the illusory wall, you're going to be hitting it again. On my first Dark Souls 3 playthrough, I'm going to hit every single wall. I really am. I'm gonna do it. It's gonna be Pendant 2.0. I mean, I'm gonna hit everything. He says this because he likes having accidents happen in like battle rooms or like a misplaced arrow accidentally opening a wall, you know, and stuff like that. And that's how I found most of the illusory walls, uh, besides the fact of uh, Quaylag's one. Uh, after her boss fight, I had to look that one up. Yeah, I was looking for. Last Pyromancy. I had to do that. Anyway, that's sidetracking. So, all really good news. And that's going to actually cut it for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want to see more videos like this, where I kind of give you my perspective on news that's coming out and give you guys some knowledge that I've been picking up recently, uh, tell me. And if you think I should have done something else in this video, tell me about that. Uh, if you guys want me to, I will do a Bloodborne DLC uh, kind of uh, theory video, maybe what it's going to be about, and different stuff like that. Uh, just tell me down in the comments, and guys, I need ideas for my, for my channel. I'm running low on ideas. I've been trying a bunch of different stuff, trying to see what I'm good at. Making been making that uh, Great Scythe video for Dark Souls 2, and starting to edit it. Uh, looking over my fights and making sure I know every single strategy and every single combo that you can pull off and I've been enjoying it and enjoying it hopefully you guys like it hopefully I'm doing a good job anyway guys thank you have a good day and like and subscribe I'll see you guys